investors, both local and foreign, always make a comparison between return and risk. Okay, so in terms of return, I would say that I would say that um, there are certainly many opportunities that are coming up. Okay, and in fact, there are there, there are a lot of areas of potential, like for example, agro-based industries. That's an area we haven't exploited to the full. There's tremendous potential there. Okay. Uh, tourism uh, we receive about about um, let's say 1.5 million visitors a year uh, the, the the peak uh, number of tourists was in 2011 when we received 1.8 million I always argue that we are considerably underperforming because if you look at a country like Spain that has 40 million people similar population to Kenya's they receive 80 million tourists so I believe like in tourism we can do 10 times better we can generate 10 times 15 times greater numbers okay so there's tremendous potential in in in, in that particular sector there are many opportunities coming up in telecommunications Africa is one of the fastest growing uh, telecommunications markets in the world uh, uh, Kenya also that's that redevelopment has been reflected in Kenya Kenya is one of the fastest growing markets in the world uh, we lead in a number of areas innovative areas uh, uh, like like mobile money transfers for example okay we're almost pioneers in that area and 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 that's been very very successful and that's created quite a number of accompanying opportunities as well there are also non-traditional uh, agricultural sectors like horticulture that have done very, very well. And there's tremendous potential because people are now, uh, there's now renewed interest in farming. At one time, many people were, were going out of farming into, into, into service industries because they felt service industries were more profitable. But now quite a number of people are looking at farming again. Even many young people and young entrepreneurs are trying out farming. Okay. And, and profitable areas like dairy farming, for example. I know many young entrepreneurs who've gone into dairy farming, okay, which requires quite a substantial investment, but also can give you potentially very good returns. If you're talking about local, uh, uh, local investment or domestic investment, uh, I would say that Kenya is still a very difficult market in which to do business. Okay? Uh, in a recent study of the World Bank, 2015 ease of doing business indicators Kenya was ranked number 136 in the world out of 189 countries okay so let's say you could say the uh, the bottom 50 countries more or less in terms of ease of doing business and the previous year in 2014 we were ranked uh, 137 in ease of doing business so improved by only one position so there are many areas for both local and international investors that still make it very difficult for us to do business for example it's very hard to start a business in kenya okay if you go to markets like rwanda for example <clears throat> it takes one day to re open and register a business in rwanda in kenya it takes on average two months okay to register and open a business all right it's still very difficult to uh, to get credit for business on on global standards Rwanda, for example, is ranked number four in the world in terms of ease of credit for businesses. All right, uh, we are ranked somewhere like uh, number 105 in the world in terms of ease of credit uh, for businesses. Okay, so it's still difficult to get credit for businesses to start. Okay, especially small businesses. It's difficult to register property. All right. It's it's uh, difficult to to, uh, to get electricity, and not only an electricity connection, but also reliable electricity. So there are still a lot of infrastructural constraints. Many many large companies have to have backup generators, especially if they use a lot of electricity in their production. There's also a lot of uh, red tape and corruption. Okay. So so uh, that also becomes a big challenge when you're trying to do business as well okay still a lot of uh, disturbance by the city council especially for small businesses oh yes absolutely because um, if you look at if you look at the economic history of the most successful countries like for example the east asian countries singapore south korea malaysia indonesia how they developed initially 
a very fast and achieved growth rates of 8 to 10 percent on average for three decades was fast by local investment. We have to have confidence in our economies, our own economies first, okay? And when we are channeling a lot of our funds into the local economy, then the local economy will tend to grow quite fast and that becomes attractive for foreigners as well okay because foreigners see the high growth rates okay they see the high investment rates so that's a signal to them but if we don't have confidence in our own economy it's much more difficult for foreigners to have confidence in our economy so domestic investment and improving domestic investment is actually absolutely crucial and it's the starting point of major economic revival